Grand Prix weekend here in New Zealand. First interview for what's going to be a huge, huge meeting on the weekend. Dylan Ferguson, welcome to Campbell's Comments. Yeah, no, thanks, Paul. I've been waiting for the call up for a while, so it's good to be on here. Well, don't take long. All you have to do is ring me and I'll <laughs> give you an interview. Oh, no, it's good. Um, no, it's a great week to be a part of, and uh, it's good you're over here promoting our sport as well as back over home. Oh, I think it's great. I think the race meetings you guys put on. Firstly, Cup Week. You weren't here for Cup Week, though, were you? Nah, I sat Cup Week out this week. I watched it from the comfort of my own home. So, um, you know, every year that's all everyone strives for is to have horses at Cup Week. So hopefully next year we might be able to bring a couple down. you got She's Bells going around in the two-year-old trotting fillies, and we'll get on to her in a second on Sunday. But just a little bit beyond yourself, you're training in a partnership with um, Graham Rogerson. Firstly, Rogie, how, how does that all go, and um, what's he like to work with? Yeah, no, he's um, been great to me my whole career, really. I worked for him when I first, well, when I was still at school and when I left school when he was in partnership with Peter Blanchard and then uh, went away for a couple of years and did my own thing, went to Aussie for a bit and um, then came back. And when Rogie sort of had a gap there, I, I jumped back in and um, we sort of started off with about six horses, I think, and built all the way back up to working sort of 20, 25 all the time and uh, a few mares and foals and that running around, so... Um, yeah, he sort of scaled back up again after scaling down. So, um, But no, as I say, um, you know, he's been great to me my whole career, right from when I started driving. And, uh, and he's one of those sort of guys you'd much rather have him in your corner than, than not. And um, if you put in the hard yards and, and know what you're sort of talking about a little bit, he, he pushes you and drives you to be the best you can be. So um, in that aspect, you yeah, say so you couldn't ask for a better boss and, and mentor as such. Well, you've rattled that off. I would say you also, he's great at keeping young blokes like yourself in the sport because he's given you a fair leg up by the, same, the way you just spoke so glowingly of him. Yeah, well, as I say, I, not blowing my own trumpet, but I've always taken myself to be, you know, quite a decent worker. And um, he's one of those people, if he sees you putting in that extra effort, um, he doesn't mind doing the same for you. So, um, yeah, as I say, couldn't, couldn't speak highly enough of him. He's going to ride at the Gallopers too. Um, he had a nice winner in Sydney just recently. Pretty nice uh, horse. I think the Butterworth owns a share in it as well. So do you do much on the thoroughbred side of things with him? Oh, I try to avoid that a little bit. Otherwise, they get given a job. But, um, you know, it's all, we're all trained on the on the same complex. And um, if anyone hasn't been there, it's, um, you know, it's a state-of-the-art facility for, for horses, that's for sure. And as I say, all the horses are trained there together and, um, you know, it's a, certainly a, a big operation now, but it was a lot bigger back in its day. So, um, you know, as I say, great facilities and you couldn't ask for a better place to train a horse. North Island, when I get there, I'd say I'm going to be doing some interview. We'll be knocking on your door and uh, going through there. How many thoroughbreds, just quickly, does he train? Oh, I, I always say, oh, he's only got about 40 and everyone looks at me like only. But as I say, back when, when I left school, there was probably 120 thoroughbreds there. Um, at any one time and we had 60 standard breeds so as I say scaled back a lot but probably not in some people's minds. Training you drive but training and driving which one do you prefer the most? I like driving when they're going good um, when things are going bad the first thing I want to do is put someone else on them so um, I, I probably I still really love driving if I'm just doing that like I don't mind traveling to well not so much now but man or two and just drive for other people jump in the car and go home but um, I certainly think when, when I'm training and we've got a big team of horses in, I'd rather just focus on our ones. And um, one thing, Jason Lee, actually, he told me this when I went to Queensland on junior driver's trip. He said, always look after the ones back home because they're the ones that'll be there forever, you know. Um, so that's one thing I've always sort of, that's rung true to me. And I always do the best by our horses first and, and obviously our state. Rightio, uh, we're back. Had a flat battery. Anyone wondering what the glitch was? Because I'm not big on uh, editing and cutting things out. Uh, one thing about it, the rock star, Jason Lee, he watches these. So when you start reciting his name, mate, you know he's going to be watching it, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, no, he's a great guy, Jason. And as I say, that's one thing I remember from the trip because the, most of the time we had a few beers, so we didn't remember much else. But, um, you know, as I say, that was probably some of the best advice I've ever had in my life in racing. So um, well, here we have to take credit for that one. Right, you're over here, you got two horses. Uh, for the other filly race, when did you say uh, just the other night, did she? Yeah, she raced in Group 2 Mares race um, last week and she was off the back mark and sort of never really got into the race and didn't have much luck. So um, I sort of couldn't really fault her after the race. So I thought, oh, she can go around again on Saturday at um, Akaroa on the grass and may as well have another run before she heads off home as well. So.
Do they have as much grass racing in, up on the North Island? No, I think we're back down to about two or three meetings now. Um, if that, I'm not even too sure if they're going ahead this year. So uh, it's a real shame. It leaves a bit of a hole in the North Island summer racing. But, um, you know, I'll be looking forward to getting out on the grass on Saturday anyway. Do you enjoy that part of it there? Yeah, no, the grass is awesome. It's just a bit more laid back and casual environment. And um, generally, well, it's a Saturday this week, but generally it's the Sunday meeting. And... Um, everyone goes there and has a good time, really. Campbell's coming, so I'm going to be there, so I'm looking forward to it, as I are going to be on Grand Prix Pre Day. How cool is it, a Group 1 two-year-old trot, but a Group 1 two-year-old trot for the fillies as well? Like, I mean, that's just terrific. It's great for the breeders, great for the trainers, great for the drivers to, to have something to aim for, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, first year this year, splitting up the, the Colts and the fillies, and uh, we saw it last week with the, the Oaks being a Group 1 for the first time, and as say, having a two-year-old trotting fillies race um, for, for Group 1 status is, is a massive step in the right direction for, for our sport. And um, if only the, the older mares last week was a Group 1 as well, I think that would have really sealed the deal for um, trotting mares promotions in, in New Zealand. But hopefully we can work towards that. And um, then, you know, you've got every age group covered with, with the potential to win a Group 1 because we all know it's... It's hard taking on the boys, and it's probably even harder the older they get taking on taking on the boys trying to get that Group 1 win. So um, it's a massive step in the right direction, and hopefully it keeps getting better. It's a similar problem in Australia, so don't worry about that. And um, they've changed the group ratings in Australia to make it a little bit harder. But it's so important to have group racing for mares because people keep saying about how we lose numbers. But if there's group racing for mares, people have something to aim for for those horses instead of saying, well, they're more value in the broodmare barn. Um, but if you can put a couple of Group 1 next to their names, they're more more valuable on the racetrack, and then they can go to the broodmare barn later on. Yeah, definitely, and uh, uh, you hit the nail on the head. The breeding barn's the the major winner in all of it, um, and that's what we need to worry about, really, because that's the future for everyone. No, absolutely. She's Bells, um, going terrific. Yeah, she had a bit of a hiccup last start at Auckland. She just didn't trot the bends that good, but uh, before then her, her form was pretty sharp, and... Um, we took quite a lot of confidence out of the way Barry Purdens and Scott Fairland's trotters performed down here, knowing that we'd competed with them. Um, so, you know, we, we were coming down here thinking we could, you know, knock, knock them all off. But as I say, a bit of a hiccup last start probably dented the confidence. But one thing it probably hasn't dented our confidence in is, is her ability, and she's got a big motor. So um, we're certainly not here just to make up the numbers, that's for sure. Um, Auckland is, don't take another step back as you'll be out of the picture, but uh, Auckland, uh, they go, I forget which way it is, anti-clockwise, opposite direction. Anyway, is that the only hiccup because it was the opposite way or was there other issues? Well, oh, she'd won there before, so it was a, a bit of a head scratcher, but in saying that we'd been focused on the left-handed racing for a long time um, with this race in mind and it was just impossible to get a suitable race for her up north, so that's why we had to go back to back to the right-handed way of going um, and it sort of yeah, didn't come off too well for us but she's trained on well since um, down here and you know as I say we just hope, hope it was just a minor hiccup in the road and we're on the other side of it and on the way back up. Um, you weren't here for cut week you said you took that off so has she had a look at Addington before? No it hasn't been to Addington before so um, but you know staying out here at Regan Todd's the track's first class and it's supposed to be um, Addington's twin brother so um, you know she she knows her way around a track at the end of the day and um, as I say she's she's had plenty of practice left-handed and um, just you know two-year-old trotters they they could do anything on the day so we just hope that we're one of the ones that's doing it all right. It's interesting though um, I remember like Reggie saying that that it's basically based on on Addington which so it's got to be an advantage because it is a unique track it's one thing as an Aussie, oh, I'm so jealous because our tracks, especially in Victoria, they're all thousand metre tracks and you guys might sit there and say, oh geez, that's great, but so boring, so predictable. You guys have the queries, like you have Auckland, you have you have Addington, you have uh, Ashburton and those are good tracks, big thousand metre tracks, then you can go to the grass. You guys got so much choice. I, I, I think that part's great, but are also going into a group one race and you've got these slight little uh, chinks, if you like, of Addington, it's still got to be a little bit of a query. Yeah, for sure. It's probably a, a bigger issue when you're going from Auckland to Addington than it is, you know, racing at Cambridge to Addington and things like that. Um, but, hey, as I say, we, we've got confidence in our horse's ability and, you know, we just hope that things go right for us on the day. Dylan, thank you very much for joining me, mate. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, good luck 
on Sunday. If you get a winner on Saturday, I might even come and annoy you again after that. But thank you. And uh, when I end up in the North Island, mate, I'll uh, be calling in and seeing his, um, his what do you call it, Horse Heaven. Yeah, something like that. It'll definitely be a pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you.